name is Brian Chege. I am the GM at uh, Meta Electric Limited. And uh, Meta Electric is, um, is a B2B, uh, business to business, vehicle sales and leasing company. But not just any vehicle, we focus only on electric vehicles. Um, our focus as a company is to um, help companies and businesses in Africa um, convert their fleets from petrol and diesel engine uh, vehicles to purely electric vehicles. We believe um, in the rest of the world there is a lot of electrification going on across the world and uh, I think um, African businesses have been ready to also enjoy the cost savings and uh, the advantages that come with running an electric f fleet as opposed to having a petrol or diesel run vehicles in their fleet. We are a fairly new company. Um, we have been working on this for over one and a half years now. Uh, it's, a, it's been a concept that's been on our mind for a while, but uh, we only brought the first set of vehicles in November last year. And that was the first achievement. So we got these vehicles from uh, BYD. BYD, which means build your dreams, is the biggest uh, um, electric vehicle manufacturer in terms of units sold. But other than that, they're also the biggest uh, battery supplier in the world. They've been in existence since 1993 and uh, one of the biggest suppliers of Chinese electric fleets. So um, we've been in discussions with them about bringing some of their vehicles into Africa. And uh, we have been looking at different kinds of models until we say let's start with the, with the van, which might be a bit easier to bring in, test the market and see how it goes. And that is what we brought in and launched uh, yesterday on the 29th of April. And uh, we intend to offer this to um, uh, logistics companies, uh, uh, delivery services, e-commerce companies, um, logis uh, security and hotel and airport transfers. Yeah. So we, that is the main achievement that the vans are now here and there is an open line to import as many more as you want depending on the client feedback. The, the launch yesterday was only a, it's merely a flag planting exercise eh? to just uh, start up the market and uh, inform our relevant players and stakeholders and, and get them to interact with the vehicles and get them to see that this is a movement that is, has, has been in everybody's lips. We've, people have been discussing it but also get them to see that it's here and it's happening and uh, try to get everybody on board so that we can move forward in this aspect. So and then um, in terms of vehicles, we are looking at the whole range of commercial vehicles um, starting from light to medium trucks all the way to motorcycles that cover. So when, when I say that I'm covering buses, um, small Nissans, Matatus as you would call them, um, refrigerated trucks, tuk-tuks and even uh, motorcycles. Yeah. Um, electric vehicles. It's, it's, it's been quite clear and it's been proven in other parts of the world uh, from an individual point of view as a, as a business person spending on these vehicles that the cost of operation of electric vehicles is um, uh, unimaginably cheaper than your normal petrol or uh, diesel vehicle. Um, just to give you a good example, a typical um, electric vehicle will cost you around uh, for 300 shillings, 300 to 400 shillings to run 100 kilometers, while a petrol diesel vehicle of around 2,000 cc engine capacity will cost you around 1,500 to run the same distance. So you can imagine here you're saving up to um, 70 to 80 percent in terms of cost of fuel. Um, cost of maintenance, um, and a petrol vehicle, a petrol or diesel vehicle, has at least 4,000 moving parts in its drivetrain, um, while an electric vehicle has 400 moving parts. So you can imagine there is no all these uh, small nuts and bolts moving in within an electric vehicle. So think of it as no oil changes, no gasket changes, no valves clogging up all the time. All these are costs that simply just disappear. All you're left with is just your uh, minimum of 10% of what you usually spend on maintenance. 
Yeah, so in terms of cost and uh, fuel and maintenance, it's you save a lot. You save up to 80% of what you usually do. But other than that, I mean, uh, electric vehicles promote uh, very clean air. They have zero emissions. Uh, they have uh, they come with a lot of brand and uh, brand equity and customer equity. So you can imagine as a businessman, if your fleet is all electric, you can imagine how much respected then uh, your customers, wholesalers and other stakeholders in the market will have for you. So there's so many advantages to electric vehicles other than just the cost. Uh, or that was just to mention a few. Um, the World Bank estimates that in, across the world, maybe by 2030, we'll have 25% uh, of vehicles in the world being electric. Africa is still very much behind, less than 1% of the vehicles are electric. Um, so I would say it's still a long way to go. There is a lot that needs to be done for us to get to that point. But it is the end goal. I mean, governments have to realize that uh, for us to, um, to meet our Paris climate goals or even the, achieve the sustainable goals of development, we have to start with transport because transport con co contributes to up to at least 67% of the carbon emissions and the, the climate change that is caused in this country. So if we are to achieve that, we have to start looking at the big uh, factors that contribute to these carbon emissions that cause climate change and one of them is transport. So and for us to do that, again, government has to come in and spur this industry. And one way to do that is possibly reducing the subsidy uh, taxes they charge on uh, electric vehicles. So ideally, the cost of an electric vehicle is up to 80% um, higher than your normal internal combustion engine vehicle. And that is because of the battery. The battery is one of the most expensive aspects of the vehicle. But this uh, technology is getting better over the years and it will be cheaper, definitely. But also governments should step in and subsidize the cost of these electric vehicles by waiving taxes on them. And that's one way they can encourage um, people and encourage the market to bring in more and trade in, in electric vehicles. They, it's, a, it's possible that we'll get to a point of full electrification. But this is very early stage at this point in time. There is still so much that needs to be done. There is, uh, in terms of government and other stakeholders, and even sensitizing um, population about electric vehicles. The fact that uh, buy-in price of these electric vehicles is very high. Like I said, it's up to 80% more than your equivalent um, petrol or engine vehicle. So um, we at Meta Electric, what we are doing right now is uh, taking away this risk from clients. Um, for instance, now instead of as a business, you want to change your fleet from um, diesel to um, electric. Uh, instead of spending um, fifty, sixty thousand dollars on a single car, you can come. We'll take that risk for you. Buy the car and offer it to you on a lease. All you have to do is pay a monthly fee and uh, charge the vehicle. So our lease deals typically range from uh, um, a semi-dry lease, which includes uh, maintenance, service and maintenance of the vehicle, insurance, and um, uh, tire changes every few uh, thousand kilometers. Once we take all, that, all those costs away from you, you as a business owner, all you have to worry about is your lease fee and your cost of electricity. And if you need a driver, you're the cost of your driver. The vans that we imported recently uh, from China, um, they would retail at around uh, 5.5 to 6 million, which is very high compared to your normal um, petrol van of similar size, which will probably be half that cost. Yeah, so that is what, that's what I refer to when I say talk about the very high buying costs of these vehicles. Yeah. But we are still, like I said, we are taking that risk for you as a business and we are offering these vehicles on lease so that you don't have to incur these prohibitive upfront costs. In terms of total cost of ownership, electric vehicles are marginally higher than petrol, uh, than petrol vehicles in Africa. And that is because we pay up to 70% of the cost of vehicles in taxes. Um, and by total cost of ownership, I mean your cost of buying the car and cost of operating it over um, five to seven years or so. Was, um, yes, electric vehicles have a high buy-in cost, but you'll save a lot in op operationally. You'll save up to 
70 to 80 percent operationally when you're running this vehicle over the next few years. So it's it's really a question of um, do you want to spend more today and less in the future or less today and spread it out over the future. And that is one way to look at it. Um, it's, so it's not for a class. Any business owner can have an electric vehicle. And we believe that in the near future and uh, the, the technology around EVs and battery technology is moving very fast across the world. And we believe that in the near future, batteries will definitely get cheaper. And so the x wax cost of an electric vehicle will become cheaper. Secondly, we are in talks with governments um, to try and see the value of electric vehicles to the economy and to the environment and even to the local Mwananchi who's putting more money in their pocket by saving a lot more on the operations. And once we, and we appreciate the government and understands this, we saw Kenya made an effort to reduce excise duty last year from 20% to 10%. And we feel like there is more that can be done. We just need to demonstrate uh, um, um, that these electric vehicles are here. And once government subsidies are, uh, government taxes are actually reduced further, then now that's where we start realizing the full um, benefits of going electric. Yeah, so uh, at this point in time, um, the costs are almost at par, but in the future it is only going to get better. So at the moment, uh, most of African countries are still uh, importing uh, second-hand vehicles from the US, uh, the UK and Japan. And most of these are uh, petrol or diesel vehicles that are maybe um, only I think it's uh, there are three or four countries that have uh, that have banned importation of second-hand vehicles. Most of other African countries just put an age limit, so most of these vehicles come in quite used. So they still have a lot of emissions, given that they are quite old. And um, but we believe this is changing um, as governments get more and more aware of the ecological benefits actually of electric vehicles. We we see that this trend will improve. And away from transport, we have to appreciate the fact that uh, a lot of, uh, especially here in Kenya, we are producing almost 93 of our energy is clean through uh, um, our hydroelectric power. And uh, we actually produce a lot more power than we use. So there's, uh, there's a lot of surplus power which can be used by um, charging these electric vehicles and save. I mean that way we don't have to keep looking for dollars to import oil when we have our own power which can be used to charge vehicles which can run our economy, our transport and logistics economy. So um, in the future, the future is, is, uh, is needs all stakeholders to come together. Um, we are in this industry already. There are so many other players in this industry within Africa, within East Africa, and um, we all have one voice, and that is um, we need to work closely with governments for us to make this um, e-mobility a belief. And not only government, we also need to work with civil society and media who will sensitize the public on the, on the, on the benefits of e-mobility and the benefits of it for the future generations. Remember, it's, it's not really about us who are here right now. As soon as we save our climate in the future, it's going to impact our the second generations that come after us. We, the youth, are more, and uh, this is a very subjective thing to say, we are more perceptible to change. And uh, as you could witness from our lounge yesterday, um, we also handed, we handed over the first set of electric vehicles to a company that is also run by a uh, young, young man who is also very excited about uh, electric mobility. And I would say also that most of the businesses are run, the most of the fellow uh, companies that are in this space are also driven by the youth. So I think um, what the youth can do in this sector is, first of all, um, sensitize um, each other about electric mobility. We are, who are already on the know can talk to your fellow um, youth out there. Um, and this is not just in business, also even on the streets, because electric mobility is not just going to affect um, uh, vehicles. It goes all through the transport sector down to the motorbikes. The, the border border guy at home 
and we need to talk to him about electric mobility, get him to understand the aspect and create the demand. Yeah. As you see, as soon as we create the demand for these electric vehicles, everything else will fall in place and the government will be, fall, uh, will be forced to act. I believe the youth have the capability um, to push this agenda forward, like they've done in um, telecoms. You see, we skipped the landline and kept straight into um, um, mobile, mobile telephony. And that is what I think can happen with e-mobility with the support of the youth in Africa.